Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a new episode of EVE Echoes. Tonight on the show we are continuing and finalizing the ship tree reviews, uh, because we are going to cover the last two remaining factions, or the last two remaining ship lines. Uh, last episode we've touched on the interbus and or basically covering all the industrial ships offered by the game, and today we are going to cover Servant Sisters of Eve and the Yang Jung. Uh, the Yang Jung is a new faction being introduced to Eve, uh, to the Eve universe, uh, but it was introduced within Eve Echoes. I'm not sure if there'll be any plans to introduce it inside Eve Online. We're not covering Eve Online here. This channel is all about Eve Echoes. One important side note, there's been a lot of uh, let's say complaints from people that have been uh, banned or at least they claim they have been banned unjustified um, and that the process was somehow automatically um, some claims seems to come uh, seem to come from uh, people uh, actually I don't know ratting or mining inside uh, uh, some space that is basically there's some faction groups that uh, that tend to, to to just claim sovereignty there. And uh, based on those people's claims, uh, well, apparently they were banned because they were mass reported for actually not doing anything wrong. Well, I've put this to the test. Uh, me and Sovereign, um, you know, Sovereign RPG, we've put this to the test and we actually asked our alliances to just mass report us, mass spam report us, and nothing happened. I'm here today, right now, recording this video, and so is Sov, and he just released something similar within the EVE News Network. So it's it's not an automatic system, uh, that system is not in this game. Uh, all the reports are being filtered by the support people, and once they finish their investigation, and if the allegations are true, you've made racist comments or whatever, you know, toxic behavior. We've had uh, one such video basically uh, defining what toxic behavior is. So once the investigation is complete, if the allegations are true, you get banned for seven days and then probably permanently. Um, but it's, it's not the case here. Mass reporting, mass spam reporting, it's not a thing and will never be. Before we get into our subject for today, please remember to throw in a like and a subscribe if you like what we're doing here. And remember, if you wish to support my channel, there's the YouTube channel membership. Uh, you can uh, monthly donate a monthly sum of just $2. Link in the description. So let's get on with our main topic because um, we had our share of the news. We had our share of the intro. The Servant Sisters of Eve. Uh, they have been inside the Eve universe. They've been introduced inside the Eve Online. Um, so the Servant Sisters of Eve um, ship line comprises of uh, three important ships. We've got the frigate, the cruiser, and the battleship. They excel at using drones and have good agility, but their max velocity is low. So uh, main armament drones that's definitely drones preferred tank we've got armor tanking while also they have a special feature just like every other faction the sisters of eve uh, ships specialize in uh, scan resolution and scan strength they'll probably receive bonuses for scanning um, scanning itself, you know, like in launching probes and scanning stuff down once these items make it into the game, but they're not yet available. So right now, uh, what they can be used for is for hauling, uh, because they can also fit a covert ops cloaking device. All of them, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let's take a look. Nope, unfortunately the battleship uh, does not, uh, but the cruiser and the frigate definitely can. So let's begin with the frigate. It's called the Astero. Um, just as a quick side note, these ships in EVE Online are mainly used for exploration. They have been introduced, if I'm not mistaken, in the Odyssey expansion uh, when the scanning was revamped uh, and exploration is basically um, searching space for hidden and um, 
signatures, like you launch a probes, you scan, you detect something that is not an anomaly, uh, it's basically a, a signature that you need to pinpoint using your probes, and then you lock onto it by performing multiple scans, uh, rearranging your probes so you can get it to 100% uh, accuracy, then you can warp to it, and most of them are actually uh, combat. Uh, but there's a lot of data sites and relic sites, and from those, you, in EVE Online, you can get a lot of stuff. But um, that stuff that you can find there are now being um, found in ship debris. So the, um, uh, the rig components, you know, like the uh, intact armor plates and stuff like that that you use to make rigs, are now... Um, being found when you refine the ship debris. So it's going to be an interesting perspective to see how NetEase will basically introduce exploration and how uh, these ships will probably reclaim their glory inside EVE Echoes as well. So the Astero has a three drone slots, two high slots, three med slots and three low slots with three three rigs. Can fit a covert ops cloaking device, has a 100% cloaking device lock delay, and a cloaking device reactivation delay, meaning you can cloak up faster after you have decloaked. 5% cargo hold optimization, uh, these are roll bonuses by the way, and for advanced frigate defense, upgrade bonus per level, you've got 5% cargo hold capacity, 5% scanner resolution, and 1 scan strength. Again, uh, at least the, la uh, the last bonus uh, can be used with the scanning, in, as in probes, but we don't have these yet in the game. And of course, Advanced Frigate Command bonus per level, we've got 30% drone DPS and 30% drone effective hit points and 4% armor resistance. Overall defense, uh, the, defense the, uh, the effective HP is pretty decent for a frigate. Um, the Armor resistances are pretty standard for an armor tank, and, and by going into uh, the um, more detailed info, we can see the cargo hold capacity just 420 uh, cubic meters. It's good, but there's other ships like the Imicus that can hold a lot more. Although having a covert ops uh, and drone firepower, uh, these can be quite uh, the beast. I don't think they can match a worm. In, in damage output, but they're definitely nice and will probably be used uh, a lot after this. Um, the exploration items are going to be introduced, or at least the exploration mechanics. So, moving on to the cruiser size vessel of the Sisters of Eve, we've got the Thracios, which was uh, one of my favorite ships in EVE Online. Uh, the roll bonuses are still the same, a one uh, can fit a covered ops cloaking device, uh, cloaking device lock delay and cloaking device reactivation delay, 5% cargo hold capacity, scan resolution and a scan strength all for advanced archaeology bonus per level. Now, I don't think we have archaeology yet in the game, but um, it's definitely going to help once the exploration is going to be introduced, just like I mentioned with the Astero. Advanced Cruiser Command bonus per level, you get 25% drone DPS, 4% armor resistance, and 3 uh, plus 3 kilometers drone control range. Total cargo, 1,000, at least um, 1,100 me cubic meters. The armor resistance are pretty fine for an armor tank, uh, and the estimated market value is around 1.5 billion. <laughs> um, there's some interesting... Um, a lore if you want to read in the description we're not going to go into it yet um, we'll probably do a cover on uh, on some stories and some stuff in the near future so feel free to uh, to tune in until we get those out moving on to the battleship sized uh, ship from the sisters of eve we've got the nesta now the nesta is a bit weird in terms of comparison as to the other Sisters of Eve ships. Now, if the uh, frigate and the cruiser were mostly focused on exploration and on drone firepower, the Nesta battleship has some weird bonuses. Let's take a look at them. So, uh, definitely the cloaking device is not yet, is not a thing for this ship. 
Uh, but you got 50% remote armor repair efficiency, 100% uh, remote armor repair optimal range, no 100% group armor repair effective range. And you get the other bonuses standard to the system of Aviv. We've got 5% cargo hold capacity, 5% scan resolution, and 1% scan, scan strength. And the drone bonuses of 60% drone DPS, 4% armor resistance, and 10%, uh, sorry, plus 10 kilometer drone control range. Uh, the effective HP is quite good for a battleship, but the bonuses are really interesting. So if you can see, the Nesta is actually a spider tanking vessel. If you're not familiar with spider tanking, uh, in EVE Online, spider tanking means every ship can perform remote repping uh, with its spears, meaning a fleet of Nestas can actually you can also have just one or two or three as logistics, uh, logistic battleships, but having multiple of these in a fleet, like have a fleet just out of nesters, they can perform spider tanking. They can share damage and they can actually remote repair themselves uh, regardless of who is taking damage. So if you're focusing one, you're gonna have a pretty tough time in taking it down because all the other nesters are going to repair it effectively. And don't, let's not forget, it's a pretty fine looking ship. <laughs> it's It looks really futuristic. I think there's a Netflix series that have some ships similar to the Nesta. Nonetheless, a beautiful, beautiful ship. That's pretty much it on um, what the Sisters of Eve have uh, to offer in terms of ships, weaponry, a tank, and what role they fit in. Uh, again, the battleship is a tad different than the frigate and the cruiser inside the same ship line. Moving on to the Yang Jung. The Yang Jung is a faction that has been introduced to EVE Echoes for now. We don't know if it's going to be planned to be released inside EVE Online, but for now we can uh, enjoy it, um, it on a limited scale. Why I'm saying on a limited scale? Because they haven't been yet fully introduced. We only have two ships, two whole um, classes. We've got the frigate and we've got <laughs> yeah, the battle cruisers. We don't have a cruiser, we don't have a battleship. It's just a destroyer. Uh, sorry, not freer. It's just a destroyer and the uh, battle cruisers. Now, inside the beta, uh, these ships were amazing. They were very potent and they had like insane damage, insane range, insane a lot of stuff. It's safe to say that the nerf hammer hit them and hit them good. Let's begin uh, our breakdown of the Yang Jung ship tree that is available in the game currently. We've got the Xian uh, Yue prototype, three high slots, two med slots and three low slots with three three rigs, 75% small decomposer damage. Uh, the decomposers actually took a hit because uh, there were a lot of players actually fitting decomposers on other ships as well. So now they're pretty much useless unless you fit them on a uh, Yang Jung ship. The destroyer has 75% small decomposer damage just as a roll bonus, 15% small decomposer optimal range, 15% shield, uh, and one warp stability, meaning it allows it to gain an extra warp core stabilization point without having an actual warp core stabilizer fitted onto the ship. It does help, but uh, it's it also fails if uh, there's more people warp disrupting you than your actual warp stabilization value is. Um, in terms of uh, strategies and uh, what kind, what it can do. I can tell you, uh, the sh the speed is pretty crappy on it, uh, but you can definitely fit it. Um, I I don't recommend going on an, an, uh, a micro warp drive uh, because it will increase your signature and because it's a, a shield tank, uh, you won't be able to do much stuff because you'll take full damage from missiles and you'll be you'll be able to get locked faster. Well, I do recommend if you manage to get your destroy engineering in 
let's say in advanced, over to the advanced 3, 4, you can fit a cruiser size afterburner. I know you say, like, the cruiser size afterburner is fit for cruisers, right? Yes, but you can, if you have the power grid and you have the fitting capabilities, it's actually better than having the small uh, afterburner, because the small after, with no little to minimal skills actually, the, the, the standard velocity of the ship, let's say, it's going to be around 200-ish meters per second, and with an afterburner you'll just get like 400, which is a poopy speed compared to a lot of the other destroyers that will just outrun it, outmaneuver it. So fitting a cruiser size afterburner is quite interesting, and it'll reach uh, around between 700 meters per second or one kilometer per second, which is very nice in speed tanking, orbiting at, I don't know, 12 kilometers, 13, 14, whatever your optimal range is, so you can deal maximum damage while avoiding most of the damage. We've got the standard version of the Xianyue, which uh, has 25% small decomposer optimal range and 80% small decomposer damage. You've, you can see there's a boost here compared to uh, the prototype. A small boost, albeit, but definitely good. Uh, but it also gets another 10% small decomposer damage, while the prototype um, did not have any other features. So. Uh, aside the roll bonuses, you get uh, advanced small decomposer upgrade bonus, you get more damage and more optimal range, plus you get 5% shield and 10% warp speed for every level in advanced destroyer command. Uh, definitely a good ship, as you can see even the effective hit points are a lot better, uh, taking you around uh, 7500 HP, uh, just with no fit at all. So. It's a very nice looking ship and a very nice um, attribute set. We don't have the, uh, the ways of building these yet. I don't know when we will be able to or when other ships or more ships will be introduced on the, uh, on the Yangzheng line. But we're definitely waiting for them because we're very interested on those balanced touches that these ships will bring to the game. As I mentioned before, uh, the prototype versions of the Yangzheng that were available during beta proved to be too powerful and they received a nerf hammer. Moving on to the Kanyue prototype, it's a battle cruiser for, from Yangzheng, has 50% medium decomposer damage, 15% decomposer optimal range, 15% shield and 1 warp stability extra. Uh, just as a roll bonus, as you can see, uh, they're pretty much the same aside the, the decomposer damage bonus. Uh, the bonus fields or the areas where the bonuses are given are uh, pretty much standard across all Yangzheng ships. Uh, you can fly, you've just received this from a daily login if you're, uh, you're an Omega account, but remember you cannot train battle cruisers yet unless you are already uh, at tech level 7, which I'm not, but uh, I'll be soon. Flying this without some actual um, skills that will actually help you in, in, in wielding this ship uh, and flying it to its maximum potential can lead to some utter failures. Uh, we've seen screenshots of the Kanue being blown up immediately after being released by, um, as losses. To some players that just decided to take it up from spin in low sec or null sec because they thought they they had the same version as in the betas, they were wrong. They've been heavily, heavily nerfed. And we're gonna touch on the last ship from the um, Yangzheng ship tree line. It's the standard version of the Kanye. Has 20, 25 percent medium decomposer optimal range and 80 percent medium decomposer damage. 80% compared to the prototype version, which had only 50%. Uh, as you can see, the standard version are want to be a bit closer to the beta version of the Kanye Battle Cruiser and, of course, uh, with the Destroyer. So the standard version actually have some insane bonuses, 
but it still remains to see how exactly can we obtain these. So far, just the prototype version were given to us, um, and that's that. Um, we'll probably see some announcements or some further down the line when more development and more content will happen in Evecos, which is probably just around the corner. So uh, we should better wait for that and uh, speculate later. Moving on, the 80% medium decomposer damage, as I mentioned, is a beast. Warps ability and command burst module slots. Battle cruisers can fit those. We've talked about these uh, before. So it's like a command module that you can give bonuses to your entire fleet. Advanced medium decomposer upgrade bonus spell level. You get 10% extra medium decomposer damage, which is always nice, and 5% medium decomposer optimal range. And for advanced battle cruiser command per level, you get 5% shield and 10% warp speed. It can warp faster. A very decent ship uh, will probably be a beast once we understand how is it that we're gonna build it or how to fly the standard versions as far as i know they're not in the game we can check them out here but uh, still remains to see where exactly can we obtain them so that's pretty much it on the last factions uh with this we complete our ship tree reviews and we're gonna move on to some other content if you've got other ideas uh, in terms of uh, what should we tackle, I've got already have a, a list of stuff uh, that people have recommended or suggested. Uh, again, feel free to drop more stuff because I'm usually uh, collecting and making some aggregation of data in order to see what content is the most wanted. So we'll just be able to provide you with uh, information on the questions you pose in the comment section. So thank you guys for watching, a very big shout out to my channel supporters, I'll see you guys next time, cheers!